I want to look a little further with these many-to-many -many relationships. In the previous video, we looked at how a playlist can have several videos, and a video can also be in many playlists. And we're also using convention over configuration. That is, I have a list of videos here, and a list stores many items. And videos is of type video, and that's another entity type. We can tell it's an entity type because it's part of the DB set of me context. That's a important that I have it down here as an entity type. I have videos down here. I have list. I have list. The convention is actually I collection. Okay, you must have an I collection type. I'll copy that. I'll paste that there. And, and having an I collection on both ends still makes it a many to many relationship. I'll actually control F5 this and prove to you that all that is necessary is the I collection interface to get that many to many relationship. Go back over here. And you can see here's the video. Here's the playlist and this video is inside of this playlist. Let me show you how I changed up the data since the last video. I just have one video, I have one playlist, I put the video in that playlist, add it, save changes, and voila, it works. Anyway, so you can say I collection here. I think that's dumb. I think I collection is uh, such a lame interface. I think there's only two collection types that are sequence type, container, or whatever you want to call them. There's only two or three of them that implement iCollection. iCollection is just big and bulky. Go look at my iCollection versus iEnumerable uh, interface video. I, I, I go into all that. And there's some interesting stuff there. Anyway, let's go back to list. List is plenty fine. I'm just going to say list. I have my many-to-many -many relationship. The problem is, to get a many-to-many -many relationship, as you saw in the last video, I had to add this list down here in video. Which makes sense. If I have a video entity, maybe I want to see all the playlists that that video belongs to. I don't see why you would not want to do this. But maybe you don't want to do it. Maybe it's overhead. Maybe it doesn't make sense to have it there. Maybe who knows what. I'll take it out. Yeah, but I'll put my curly brace back in. Taking it out, however, if you recall from the previous videos, this now turns into a one-to-many relationship. One playlist has many videos, but each video is only in one playlist. Okay, I'll actually control F5 this build this, run it, let it run to completion and do you recall how the schema will change over here? First of all we won't have this mapping table, this mini to mini mapping table and now we have the playlist ID inside of each video. Ugh, what a problem, I don't want the list inside my video class but I also want a mini to mini relationship and so far we've been using convention over configuration, the convention is hey if you got a I collection going both ways, which list is an I collection, then the entity framework confers that as a many-to-many -many relationship, but if you don't have it, we need to be more explicit with the entity framework and tell the entity framework our true intentions. And the way we do that is by describing our model further to the entity framework inside of our DB context class. I'll come down here and say override. And can you think of any method I would want to override when I was when I'm building the model? I'll go figure. On model creating. The Entity Framework calls this when it decides it's going to set up this internal in-memory schema of what our data looks like. It passes the DB Model Builder, which essentially is a simple class we can use to tell the Entity Framework our intentions. For example, let me click on this. Hit of 12 so we can kind of go look at the DB Model Builder. Methods and members is not a very long class. There's one method I'm interested in, and that is this entity method. It returns an entity type configuration, F12 on that. This looks a lot like what we just looked at. It's getting shorter, though. There's a bunch of methods in here we'll explore over the course of the videos. But the one I'm interested in right now is this has many, which returns a many navigation property configuration, F12. To go look at that, scroll out. And it has some additional methods with many. It returns another many-to-many -many property configuration, so on and so forth. The whole purpose of all these types that we just saw is for us to be able to describe using metadata, describe back to the entity framework what our true intentions are. Let me just show you the quick high-level syntax, and we'll dig into it in future videos. I'm going to say, hey, model builder. Uh, you remember that playlist entity? When you look at the playlist entity, um, it has many videos. And by the way, the videos also has many. Oh, why didn't they call it has many? They called it with many. Lame. With many. Videos with many playlists. I, I don't know why it makes me so frustrated. Let me, let me see if I can illustrate this a little bit. Playlist has many videos. Oh, and by the way, videos has many playlists. See this kind of circular thing going on here. Playlist has many videos. Videos has many playlists. 
So now, when I run this, Control F5, uh, this method runs automatically when the any framework is configuring our our model. Let me actually put a breakpoint there. And F10 through this code, F10, make the context, delete the database. At that point, the entity framework's like, oh, we need to build the internal in-memory model. Is there anything we need to know about special from you? And it calls the on model creating method. I like to call it a hook. Go to go Google the hook design pattern. I, I definitely feel like that's what they used here. Anyway, F5, I'll let that run to completion again. And go back to SQL Server and F5. You can see that that column for the one-to-many relationship disappeared. And now I can say select splat from video playlist. F5. Oh, I get an error. Why do we get an error? Remember our mapping table, our many-to-many -many mapping table from the last video was named video playlist. But if I click over here and refresh, you can see the table is now called playlist of videos. And it doesn't matter if it's videos to playlist or playlist to videos. It's still a mapping table, a many-to-many -many mapping table. The whole reason why it's called playlist of videos is that's how we described it. Playlist has many videos. All right, but no big deal. It doesn't matter. Many to many relationship. Uh, let's come over here and say playlist. You can see even IntelliSense is behind. It still thinks it's video playlist. Playlist videos. Videos. F5. And there you go. Here's our mapping table. So that's how you describe a many to many relationship using this on model creating method. We're going to Look at this on model creating method a lot. Again, this is called the Fluent API. I don't know why they called it Fluent. They probably thought it was Fluent, but uh, I'm going to examine this in much more detail. I, you know me, I th it's nice to type this and get the right result, but I really like to understand how this stuff works because when it breaks, then I'm in control and not the entity framework. So we're going to explore all this in more detail in the future videos.